Let's continue on with example five. So here you'll notice that we, instead of adding and subtracting like we did in example uh, four, we're going to start multiplying some polynomials that we have. This will work exactly the same way it works with just plain fractions with numbers that you've dealt with historically or just uh, foiling things out and it works the exact same way. Just more examples uh, sort of to refresh your memory perhaps. So here we have 4h, 4h cubed k squared over 7 times 21hk to the fifth over 2. As long as we're multiplying two rational expressions or two fractions or two polynomials, we do the same thing we've done before. We can reduce anything on top with anything on the bottom and whatever's left over is our answer. So seven goes into 21 three times. So I can cancel out the seven with the 21 or divide the seven by itself and get one on the bottom and divide the 21 by seven and get three in the numerator. Similarly, four divided by two is going to yield just a two in the numerator. H cubed times the H will give us H to the fourth that's the product property of exponents. When bases are same and we're multiplying the terms, we add the exponents. So 3 plus 1 will give us 4. And then finally, we have k squared times k to the fifth. Bases are same and we're multiplying, so we add the exponents. We get k to the seventh. Next, here, I did this here, but I didn't mention it, and I hope that it was obvious. What I started off by doing was writing all the like terms together. So I wrote the numbers by themselves, then I wrote the h's by themselves, and then I wrote the k's by themselves, and then I just com uh, canceled out the stuff that I could, or divided out the, the common factors. Same thing here. 20 and a 12, we can write them out front. We have x squared and x to the third. We can put those together. We have a single y and a y to the fifth. Those go at the tail end. And then the three and the five are being multiplied, but because they're both in the denominator, we place them as such. And now three goes into itself once, and three goes into 12 four times. Five goes into itself once, and five goes into 20 four times as well. So four times four will give us the 16 x squared times x to the third will yield x to the fifth. And then finally, y times y to the fifth will give us y to the sixth. Bases are same, we're multiplying, so we add the exponents. Next we have 3x to the fourth, y to the sixth, plus 8x cubed y squared times x cubed y to the fifth. We do the exact same thing we've done in the past. We can rearrange these terms so that the x's go together and the y's go together. This is not really being multiplied by anything, so it just comes along for the ride. So we just copy down 3x to the fourth, y to the sixth, and we don't really do anything with it because it's not being multiplied by anything. These two terms are being multiplied, so we need to clean that them up before we add them. So eight is by itself, x cubed times x cubed will give us x to the sixth. Bases are same, we're multiplying, so we add the exponents y squared times y to the fifth will give us y to the seventh. Now we have these two terms, but they're not like terms. Remember, for, like ter for terms to be like terms, the bases have to be the same, and the exponents have to match as well. We have an x and a y, we have an x and a y, so far so good. But the exponent of x is four, the exponent of x here is six. These are not like terms. So this is really it, this is our answer. Now you may lose a point on an assessment if you don't write polynomials in standard form. So that's where a lot of students will get caught with silly mistakes. The degree here is 10, or the if we add up the powers, four plus six is 10, six plus 11 is 13. So we have to write terms in decreasing order of degree. So eight x to the sixth, y to the seventh must be written first, and then three x to the fourth, y to the sixth. The reason why we, we force students to do this is because if you're asked to find the degree of this polynomial, a lot of times students will just look at the first term, add the powers together, and say, oh, the degree is 10. That would be incorrect. 
So it's a lot safer to write all the terms in decreasing order, and then you can be sure that, hey, whatever the first term is has to have the highest power, or it has to be the degree term. Lastly, we have 6x times x squared plus 5. We need to distribute the 6x into x squared plus 5 and get 6x times x squared plus 6x times 5. Bases are same. We're multiplying, so we add the exponents. So we get 6x to the third. And then 6 times 5 yields 30. x doesn't have a friend here, so it just comes along. For the next five, or four problems rather, 5 through 8, uh, these are star problems, so there may or may not be a mistake made here on purpose. I'd like for you to pause the video, work through these problems yourself, and verify whether this answer is indeed correct or not. If it is incorrect, or if anything here is incorrect, please mark it. In class, we'll discuss these star problems. Now, the procedure doesn't change if we're multiplying three polynomials together, or in fact, even four or 17 of them. Uh, now you'd never get a problem that has 17 polynomials being multiplied, but the point still stands. If you can multiply two polynomials together, you can multiply three of them together. All you have to do is just multiply the first two together first. Then whatever answer you get, multiply that by the third polynomial. And in fact, I would change this note to saying, multiply any two together. You don't have to multiply the first two together first. For instance, what I'm saying is, we could have multiplied x plus 2 and x plus 4 first, gotten our answer, and then multiply that by 3x minus 1. There's no requirement that x plus 2 and 3x minus 1 have to be multiplied first. Uh, this is called a commutative property of multiplication. Uh, all that really says, in a fancy way, is that order doesn't matter when you're multiplying expressions. So think back to basic arithmetic. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is still 6. 4 times 7 is 28. 7 times 4 is also 28. So if you rearrange the terms with multiplication, the answer doesn't change. Now that's not the same for division or subtraction. 10 minus 3 is not the same as 3 minus 10. So the commutative property applies to addition and multiplication. It doesn't matter which order you add numbers in. So 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 3 is still 8. Multiplication works the same way. You can multiply things in different order and get the same result. So I, I would maybe add an addendum to this note that says, it doesn't have to be the first two. It could be two of your favorite terms uh, of the ones that you're given. So here, just to follow the solution I already have, let's multiply the first two together. So we distribute x into 3x minus 1. That's here, x times 3x minus 1. And then I distributed 2 into 3x minus 1. That goes there. And then the x plus 4 is just staying there. Uh, oftentimes students will make a mistake of just leaving this out while they're multiplying these two expressions. That's incorrect. Because then you're saying that this expression is equal to just these two being multiplied. That's mathematically incorrect. You're going to lose a point for that. So please make sure even if you're not dealing with the x plus 4, it comes along until such time that you address it. So this is just simple distribution. We've done this for many, many years x times 3x gives us 3x squared, x times negative 1 gives us negative x, 2 times 3x gives us 6x, 2 times negative 1 gives us negative 2. And then combining like terms, x, negative x plus 6x gives us 5x, the other terms just come along for the ride, along with the x plus 4, that stays. Now we can distribute the x plus 4 into this trinomial, trinomial meaning three terms. So x gets distributed into this trinomial, like so, and then plus 4 gets distributed into that trinomial as well, like so. Now you just distribute the x, distribute the 4, combine like terms, and we have our answer. Notice that the answer is written in standard form, meaning the degrees are going down by 1. Uh, just as a review, this is indeed a polynomial because the degrees go down by 1, and the degrees themselves are whole numbers. Also, all the coefficients are real numbers.
the degree of this polynomial is three because that's the highest power. And then the type of this polynomial is a cubic because the degree is three.